doesn't love a good tag team? Well, besides Vince McMahon, who would push his own son-in-law down the stairs in order to break a team up if he thought one or both of them could make him some money as a single star. But as fans, we do, or at least should, cherish tag teams. It's difficult to make it as a tag team since getting the chemistry with another performer just right is often more difficult than you would imagine. Many times we've seen two perfectly good performers fall short when teaming because something just isn't quite right. One of the reasons for that is, perhaps, because the two talents simply didn't like each other. It is, after all, harder to produce great work if you're doing it with someone either that you don't like or don't respect. I mean, a guy like myself can produce first-class content on a shockingly consistent basis despite my overwhelming hatred and resentment for my colleagues. But the world, sadly, isn't full of Adam Pacitis. Although sometimes tag teams that don't get along can look past their differences and produce magic in the squared circle. Yes, even though it might look like they're the best of friends come showtime, there are plenty of instances of tag teams who would rather kick their partner's head in before they split a tab together. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com and these are 10 wrestling tag teams that hated each other in real life. Join us! Number 10, The Dicks. Remember The Dicks? No? Good, that's probably for the best. To remind you though, The Dicks were a short-lived team that performed on the SmackDown brand for a few months between late 2005 and early 2006. This was around the same time as Super Porky and dress-wearing Vito, so you know creativity was at an all-time high. The Dicks, James Dick and Chad Dick, played by Tank Toland and Chad Wicks, were a pair of jacked-up Chippendale dancers who greased themselves up before matches and used baby oil to blind their opponents. They were essentially an excuse for the commentators to make knob jokes. Perhaps fueled by the frustration of portraying a walking punchline, Chad and Tank did not get on well backstage, with Tank angry at his partner's inability to shake off the backstage ribbing he would receive from the usual suspects. Things came to a head behind the scenes at a house show during an international tour when the two had a fist fight won easily by Tank who busted the lip of Chad. Considering how low they were on the totem pole, their big spunky bone of a release after the beef was not a great surprise. See Michael Cole? I can make ha ha too! Number 9. The Mega Powers When Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan started teaming up, it was clear from the get-go that the two megastars, dubbed the Mega Powers, were on an on-screen collision course. With so much ego and testosterone on display, fueled by enough Colombian marching powder to make Tony Montana blush, there was no way that Hogan and Savage could coexist within the same universe for any sustained period of time. And so it came to be as their breakup became the focal point of WWE television and led to a blockbuster title match at WrestleMania 5. While they were raking it in thanks to their in-ring exploits, backstage tensions were high and they continued to be that way for some time afterwards, even when they teamed up in WCW many years later. The notoriously paranoid Macho Man was full of distrust for Hogan and blamed him and his wife Linda for the eventual collapse of his marriage to Miss Elizabeth and also felt like Hogan was a selfish glory hound only looking out for himself. <laughs> Gee, you think? Post-retirement, Savage would constantly trash Hogan in interviews, with the Hulkster usually not far behind with a response. Things got so tense that the two almost had a dust-up backstage at a TNA show in late 2006, but they never actually came to blows. Despite being one of the most memorable tag teams ever, there was no love lost here. Number 8. Billy Kidman and Paul London Paul London and Billy Kidman separately had a decent amount of success in tag teams. London set records and regularly tore down the house with Brian Kendrick in WWE, while Kidman formed a notable tandem with fellow filthy animal Rey Mysterio in both WCW and WWE. Together, however, their success was all too brief, thanks in large part to their dislike for each other in real life. London was the plucky young upstart at the time and Kidman was the veteran. The two didn't have much of a relationship, but WWE saw a couple of wrestlers of comparable size who shared a finishing move and stuck them together, hoping for the best. They held the tag team titles for a moment before breaking up when Billy turned heel. According to London, Kidman was a bit of a villain backstage, accusing the former Cruiserweight champion of throwing him under the bus with management and other veteran wrestlers. Per London, Kidman also had an issue with him doing the shooting star press, believing that he, as one of the performers who helped popularize and establish it, had first dibs. Once their on-screen rivalry was settled, they rarely crossed paths again, but it's clear from numerous interviews that the two didn't have much time for one another. Number 7. The Can-Am Connection like London and Kidman, the pairing up of Rick Martel and Tom Zenk in the 1980s was a case of putting a handsome rookie with a more seasoned but similar veteran. 
Only in this instance, one of the wrestlers is Canadian, so there's your Shyamalan twist for today. The Can-Am Connection had all of the potential in the world and had the honour of getting a win in the opener of the historic WrestleMania 3. They were smooth as silk in the ring, but did not have the best of relationships behind the curtain. Though they would travel together and were friends for a while, Zenk began to distrust his partner, claiming that he would secretly negotiate with Vince McMahon and other promoters to secure a more favourable financial incentive for himself. Martel, for his part, believed that Zenk was naive and didn't have thick enough skin for the wrestling business. The team fell out for good when Zenk wanted to renegotiate his WWE deal and asked his partner to back him up. Martel refused, Zenk left the company, and the model quickly found a new team in Strikeforce with Tito Santana. Fences unfortunately remained unmended before the Z-Man's passing in 2017. Number 6. Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson, two deserved WWE Hall of Famers, made history as the Soul Patrol tag team, becoming the first African-American tandem to win the tag team titles. They had the look and the charisma, and they had a pretty damn decent run for a few years there, breaking barriers while being bonded together by a shared struggle. They held the titles for 154 days, but while each respected the other, there were issues present and the two were far from best friends. While Johnson was a professional and kept his troubles out of the locker room and the ring, he was upset with what was perceived as his partner's unprofessionalism, claiming that Atlas would no-show bookings and was hard to do business with. Atlas, from his perspective, felt as though he was left stranded on occasion, accusing The Rock's father of neglecting to give him rides when he had previously promised that he would. There were rumours that the two had almost come to blows backstage, and neither had been shy about discussing their issues with the other in interviews. However, when the Soul Man passed away in early 2020, Mr. USA admitted many of his shortcomings and expressed much love and admiration for his former running buddy. Number 5. The Eliminators Perry Saturn and John Cronus went from bouncing at a Boston nightclub to bending bones as one of ECW's premier tag teams right around the time Paul Heyman's promotion was starting to get some serious attention. Having previously teamed up on the Indies, in Memphis, and in Japan, the Eliminators were a polished package by the time they rocked up in Philadelphia and had some standout matches with teams like Sabu and Rob Van Dam and the Pitbulls, amassing an impressive three three ECW tag team title reigns. Their run was derailed when Saturn suffered a serious knee injury, with creative frustrations soon colliding with real-life tensions. Saturn, for his part, didn't like his partner's attitude towards the business and refused to reform the team once healthy enough to do so. Despite his obvious potential and scary athleticism, Cronus was apparently his own worst enemy backstage, and Big Pez felt like sticking with him would adversely affect his own promising career. Just wait until you fall in love with a mop, mate. Saturn soon signed with WCW without Cronus' knowledge, putting an end to the team and their friendship for good. Unfortunately, the two never reconciled, as Perry fell off the face of the Earth in the early 2000s, and Cronus passed away in 2007. Number 4. Buff Bagwell and Too Cold Scorpio Throwing together the streetwise dojo-trained Too Cold Scorpio with pretty boy gets his mum to call the office for him Marcus not yet Buff Bagwell was always destined to end in acrimony. The two upstarts were put together without much of a plan in early 90s WCW and actually got over thanks to their high-flying style and undeniable chemistry. However, away from the ring, Scorpio had issues with Bagwell, particularly when he would hear about his supposed partner going behind his back to bury him or get finishes changed, or in one instance, demanding that he give up his business class seat to the then Mrs. Bagwell on a flight home from a European tour. The pair won the tag titles once, but were disbanded when Scorpio was released, less than a year into their run together. In the years since, both men have been outspoken against the other, with Too Cold going as far as to publicly challenge Buff to a shoot fight. That fight never happened, Bagwell probably got his mummy to call in sick, and Scorpio himself has since said that the beef is squashed, and the two have no plans to batter each other for real. I mean, to be honest, a black eye and a broken nose wouldn't exactly do wonders for Bagwell's gigolo career now, would it? Number 3. Road Warrior Animal and Heidenreich Ooh, what a rubbish tag team the LOD 2005 were. The original Legion of Doom, or Road Warriors if you prefer, were one of the most legendary teams of all time, cracking skulls and winning titles everywhere they went, from WCW and WWE to Japan and beyond. 
Animal and Hawk were popular, and if there's one thing WWE are damn good at, it's taking something popular and ballsing up the formula to the point where you question whether or not you even like the thing in the first place. Hawk sadly passed away in 2003, but WWE revived the gimmick, offering his spot to Heidenreich in 2005. Not only could the team not manage to generate about one-tenth of the chemistry of the original, but outside of the ring, the two were at loggerheads as well. Animal was upset at Heidenreich because his partner would change his travel arrangements without informing him, would show up late to shows and be disrespectful to him backstage, and generally just wasn't too thankful for the opportunity being presented to him. Heidenreich, for his part, has since admitted that he was a nightmare to deal with and had issues at the time, mistakenly believing that Animal was going to the office, specifically his brother and head of talent relations at the time, John Laurinaitis, in an effort to bury him. It's not quite Rocco the Dummy, but this was a low point for LOD. Number 2. The British Bulldogs there was always a little bit of tension between Davy Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid, who formed the popular and successful British Bulldogs tag team in the 1980s. Though Dynamite was the smaller of the two, he was the veteran and had a hot temper, and was viewed as the foreman of the team. The two were also cousins, which may have played into the tension, but while they may not have always seen eye to eye on many things, they were just about flawless between the ropes. And Smith listened to Dynamite, actually following him in walking out of WWE and all the way back to Japan while at the height of their fame. Obviously, they didn't actually walk back to Japan. That would take ages and they'd get really wet. They flew in a big plane. Anyway, although the Japan gig was working out for them, Smith wanted to return to WWE, and sensing he could make more money back in the States, he ditched his partner and joined up with Vince, taking the British Bulldog name and trademark with him. Dynamite held the grudge until the day Smith died in 2002, and in one notable incident, showed up at one of Smith's independent autograph signings, threatening to knock his flipping lights out. Number 1. The Rockers Lots of people hated Shawn Michaels in the 80s and 90s, before he found God and stopped, you know, trying to actively antagonise the fans, management, and even his fellow wrestlers. While Shawn's behaviour as the strung-out degenerate member of the clique made him an enemy of Bret Hart, Vader, Chris Candido, Bam Bam Bigelow, Shane Douglas, The Undertaker, okay, just about anyone who didn't greet him with a too sweet, he was also unafraid to turn people against him while cutting his teeth during his early days in the company. And that extended to his tag team partner. Partner, Marty Jannetty, who, despite his own incredible abilities, will always be remembered as the Marty Jannetty of the Rockers. The two were golden when performing, but away from the ring they could often go weeks without speaking to one another. Their rift was exacerbated by the fact that Vince and Co clearly saw HBK as the star of the team, splitting them up by having Michaels throw Party Marty's head through a window. Save for a brief one-off reunion in 2005, that was the end of the road for the Rockers. These days the two have a better relationship and will sometimes even appear together at conventions, but things were as fractious as barbershop glass there for a while.